Hey there once again YouTube, how you doing today? So I just want to let you know that we again we still got the baby registry up because the baby was born on October 30th, 2019. So if you guys want to help out with any of that, especially with diapers or something like that, just feel free to do that. You know, you know, you guys don't have to if you want to. Just want to let you know about that. <clears throat> we already have a car seat, so definitely don't buy this. I highly doubt you would, but just saying, don't buy that. I gotta remove that from the registry. And I do have a few things to update you guys on. So I finally finished my monthly volcano update on November 2nd. It's for October 2019 for the, you know, the monthly seismicity update for Mount Rainier, Mount St. Helens, Mount Hood, Dewberry Caldera, Mount Shasta, Wasset Peak, Long Valley Caldera, and of course Yellowstone. Now for Mount Hood, Newberry, and Mount Shasta, I believe, very quiet, guys. There are literally no reported earthquakes at all. Yellowstone and Mount Rainier in this monthly update are the volcanoes of interest, and I show the usual stuff that I do in all my monthly updates. So please come check this out. There's a link to it in the description box below. I spent a little bit extra time putting this one together, so let me know what you think. I'm going to continue doing these updates into the future, so that's that. And also in my Sizable blog, I put out a blog post tonight, actually. I don't do my Sizable blog much anymore, but it's about the small quakes along the East Coast. The magnitude 2.1, actually now 2.0, near the Glacier Peak Volcano here in Washington State. The magnitude 3.1 in Northern California, somewhat near Lassen Volcanic Center. And the magnitude 4.2 that we saw the other day at the Clear Lake Volcanic Field, which is the Geyser's Geothermal Pumping Operation. The largest geothermal energy operation in the whole whole wide world and we're going to take a look at this just real quick again a link to this is in the description box below under links so i'm not going to spend too much time at all in this video just want to let you know that i do have those two posts up and of course again links will be in the description box below so go check that out if you wish about within about less than 24 hour period we did see a few small quakes on the east coast and i write a little bit of a background of earthquakes on the east coast and I do have some plots of those as well. And then there's a 2.0 near Glacier Peak Volcano, showing some of the historical seismicity around Glacier Peak. Again, Glacier Peak is the only other volcano in Washington State that can produce voluminous tephra and ash eruptions like Mount St. Helens did in 1980. Then we have the 3.1 near Lassen Peak in California, kind of near Lassen Peak, so it might not be related at all. And then, of course, the magnitude 4.2 near the Clear Lake Volcanic Field in California, which houses the largest geothermal energy operation in the entire world, where they gather energy from a magma chamber, which is about four miles beneath the surface of the Earth, and the magma chamber itself is about eight miles in diameter possibly even larger than that so again a link to this is in the description box below come check this out i wrote some pretty cool stuff and some good resources for you guys just a quick update for that it <clears throat> excuse me whoa and also, um, Steamboat Geyser in the Norris Geyser Basin continues to shatter the 2018 eruption with every subsequent eruption, so on and so forth. So it continues to erupt, guys. This is the 42nd eruption of 2019, which I'm starting to do some live streams. Um, I'm not actually doing live streams on YouTube. I'm live streaming it through Swarm, recording it. And when there's an eruption, I do post it on the internet. I already have a few on my YouTube channel if you want to see that. Again, the most recent one was the 42nd eruption of 2019, which occurred at 2154 UTC on October 30th, 2019. The same day that my son Lucas was born. So, congratulations Lucas, you are in this world now. And again, this was the 74th, 74th eruption since it reactivated in early 2018. And so, how many eruptions do you think it's going to reach? I think it's going to reach 50, guys. 50 to 54 at the end of this year. And who knows, maybe 2020 will break the record. But I think 2019, since it erupted almost every single week in 2019, and it usually keeps a weekly schedule, I think 2019 will probably be the all-time record forever. But you never know. You know, June was a very active time where we saw seven eruptions in June with the shortest time period between eruptions being three days. So you never know. Steamboat Geyser is a very weird geyser. We still don't know why this is really occurring. So Steamboat Geyser is still active, guys. And here we have the past 30 days of temperature monitoring data for the outflow channel at Steamboat Geyser. And again, as I've said before, and especially as Michael Poland has said, which I learned from him, there are minor eruptions that occur, very, very small ones that cannot be detected on seismic stations around Norris. But then all of a sudden it culminates into a large eruption and then activity pretty much ceases. And we see the normal variations of the water and air temperature. Then minor activity increases, boom, eruption, and then it kind of goes throughout this pattern right here. Now we do see the lack of activity right now 
is a little bit larger than what we have seen before in the past month. However, it does look like it's possibly starting to rise right now. So we could be entering again a new phase of precursors as we do see every single week. So I'm guessing the next Steamboat Geyser eruption will probably happen in four days. I believe it's going to happen in about three to four days, maybe even a little longer. Now beforehand I was saying how you could use this to predict a Steamboat eruption. You really can't. Um, especially since Michael Pollan did say that some of these um, have shorter intervals. And that's true. I noticed that that some of these, for example, this one looks like it lasted almost four days and then the main eruption occurred. This one looks like it only lasted three days and the main eruption occurred. So you can't really predict when steamboat's going to erupt when you see these precursors. But when you do see minor activity start to increase, just know that a major eruption is just a right around the corner because I think the longest I've ever seen was about four and a half days of precursors and then it erupted but then again Steamboat Geyser is very odd it could do whatever and that's pretty much it for today um, I have not done my deformation updates yet for deformation at Yellowstone Caldera, Long Valley Caldera, and the Ridgecrest Coastal Volcanic Field area but I'm going to try to do that in the next few days so keep an eye out for that hope you guys have a great day God bless and I'll see you later